Hey, how's it going everybody? It's Bro here, hope you're doing well. And in this video, we're going to be creating a pretty sweet stopwatch in Java. It kind of looks like this. So, let's get into it. Before you reach the end of this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so that we together can challenge and defeat the mighty YouTube algorithm. Alrighty everyone, let's create a stopwatch. So if you're using Eclipse, we're going to go to File, New, and we're going to create a new Java project. Let's call this Stopwatch. Uh, but make sure you don't have your caps lock on like I did. So Stop, Watch, and then click Finish. And we're not going to create a module because I find modules annoying. Alright, then go to your Source folder, and then go to File, New, Class. And we're going to create a class, maybe called main, and then click public static void main. Okay, let's create another class then. So make sure you go to your source folder, then go to file, new, class, and let's call this class stop watch. And then we'll click finish. Okay, so then going back to your main class, all we're going to do here is create an instance of our stopwatch class. So we're going to type in stopwatch, and then we're going to create a name for this stopwatch. So we can call it stopwatch with a lowercase s. So stopwatch stopwatch equals new stopwatch, parentheses, semicolon. And that's it. So we're going to do everything else within our stopwatch class. So we want our stopwatch class to implement the action listener interface. So we're going to implements action it's a capital L, listener, there we go. So we need to import a few things. So we're going to need three imports, import java.awt.asterisk and import java.awt.event.asterisk and import javax.swing.asterisk. So basically we're importing everything for Java AWT and Java X dot swing. Okay, so since we're implementing action listener, we actually need some uh, methods here, more specifically the action performed method. So it's not gonna work without it. So let's get the framework for our stopwatch class all taken care of. So we're going to want a few things first. So let's create a constructor for this stopwatch class. So stop, watch, then a set of parentheses, a set of curly braces. And we're also going to create three methods. So we'll create a method called start. So void, start, parentheses, curly braces. And we'll create another method called stop. And then reset. Okay, I believe that is everything for our framework. Now we're going to be declaring some global variables and objects. So you want to be sure that you're writing this outside of your constructor so that all of these methods will have access to these global variables and objects. So right after we create this class, what we're gonna do is declare a few things. So let's create a J frame first. So J frame, we'll call this frame equals new j frame we'll want a start button and a reset button so we can use a j button for this so j button we'll call this start button equals new j button and then we can actually set some text on this button so maybe we'll just say start and we'll do the same thing for a reset button so start button and reset button, and we'll change the text here as well. So we'll change that to reset. We'll want a J label to hold the current time. So we'll call this time label equals new J label. We're also going to create a integer variable called elapsed time, but make sure you spell it right elapsed time. So this is going to hold the amount of basically milliseconds after we start our timer. Then we're going to have an integer variable called seconds. 
to hold the amount of seconds that have passed, an integer variable named minutes, and we're going to set these all to zero, by the way, and int hours. You could go crazy and add days too, but we'll just stick with seconds, minutes, and hours. Now we're also going to want a Boolean value, and we'll call this started, and we'll set this to false. We're going to use this to determine if our timer has started or not. Now with our time label, we'll want to put in some zeros, kind of as placeholders for the seconds, minutes, and hours. One easy way we can do that is by using string format. So we're going to create a string for hours, minutes, and seconds, and they're going to act as a placeholder that'll hold a bunch of zeros as the time is going up. So we'll create a string, and let's call the first one maybe seconds underscore string equals, and then we're going to use string dot format. So we're going to be formatting the string. So we'll need to use the format specifier. So it's the percent sign. And we want to display two zeros if there's currently no value in one of these places, basically. So we'll place zero to D. So if seconds is zero, it's just going to display two zeros. If it becomes one, it's going to be zero one, then zero two, so on and so forth in that pattern. Same thing with the rest of these. So we're going to add, oops, not hours. We're going to add seconds here. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing for minutes and hours, and we can just change a few things. So we're going to change seconds to minutes. And then we're going to change that here as well. And then hours. Okay, so we're going to hold off on creating a timer until the very end because we want to be sure that everything else is working first. Now for this next part, we're going to be adding a few things within our constructor for our stopwatch. So let's begin by adding the frame. So we're going to type in frame dot set default close operation. It's a lot to type. And then within here, j frame dot exit underscore on close. That's just so it closes out when you hit the X button basically. All right, and we're going to set a size to this frame. So frame dot set size. And then we're going to set two dimensions. I tend to like 420 by 420 because 420 is a funny number. And then we're going to set frame dot set layout null because I don't like layout managers. And we need to set this as visible. So we're going to do that at the very end. So frame dot set visible and this will be true now make sure that frame.set visible is at the end of your constructor because if you add components after frame.set visible sometimes it doesn't work so make sure you have this line last so i'm just going to go back to this main class and then hit run yep here is our frame it is 420 by 420 so this is enough to hold our stopwatch basically okay let's go back to our constructor and let's add a few things before our frame. So let's add the time label that's going to hold the current hours, minutes, and seconds. So what we'll do first is set the text. So we'll type in time label dot set text. And then we're going to add hours underscore string. And that is this right here. Plus, and let's add a colon to separate each of these fields basically so our string plus minutes string plus another colon then plus you guessed it seconds underscore string okay let's do some formatting of this time label so time label and let's set the bounds so set bounds and we're going to place this where x is 100 y is 100 we'll make this 200 pixels long and 100 pixels for the height 
let's also change the font. So time label dot set font, then within parentheses, new font. And the first value is you can pick a font that you like. Some fonts aren't compatible with Java, but one that I kind of like for this project was, I think it's pronounced Verdana. That's not too bad of a font, but you can always pick something you prefer better. And let's have this font be plain. So font dot plain and 35 is a decent size. And let's set a border. So time label dot set border, then within parentheses, border factory, and then dot create. And then you can pick a border from here. I kind of like bevel border one time label dot set. I don't know how to pronounce this word. Opaque, opaque. Somebody's probably making fun of me right now. Then lastly, let's set the horizontal alignment. So time label dot set horizontal alignment. And we're going to type in J text field dot center. Okay, let's see if this label actually appears now. Oh, we need to add it as well. Almost forgot. So we'll do this right by the frame. So frame dot add time label. I'll probably forget to add one of these components. So let's try it now. Yep, here we go. Let's add the buttons now. So let's start with the start button. So start button dot set bounds and we'll place this where X is 100, Y is 200. This will be 100 pixels for the width and the height will be 50 pixels. So start button dot, let's set the font to, you know what, I'm just gonna copy it here and change a few things just to save time. All right, so start button dot set font, new font, and maybe we'll change this to ink free. I kind of like that font, but pick whatever font you want that's compatible. And this will be 20. It's a slightly smaller sized font. All right, then we'll type in start button, and we don't want this to be focusable because things that are focusable are annoying. So dot set focusable false. And then we need to add an action listener so this button actually does something. So start button dot add action listener parentheses, and then we're going to type in the word this. Now let's do the same thing for our reset button. And honestly, we can just copy this and make a few changes. So we're going to change start button here to reset button. And then for set bounds, we're going to change this X coordinate to 200. So it's right next to the start button and we can keep everything else the same. Okay, now we just need to add these to our frame. So frame dot add start button and then frame dot add reset button. And let's make sure that these appear. All right, not too shabby. We need them to do stuff though, so we'll have to work on that. Okay guys, this next part's going to be a little complex. We're going to create a timer. And you know what, looking back, I don't know if I ever created a video on timers in Java. I think I have in other languages, so that's probably something I'll have to do. Uh, but don't worry, I'll kind of explain things along the way. And if you copy it exactly like I do, it should be fine. So we're going to create a timer here along with our global variables and objects. So timer, and we'll call this timer with a lowercase t, equals new timer. And then we're going to pass in a few arguments. The first value is how often do we want this timer to do something, like how frequently. 
let's say that we want this timer to update the current time every second. So the unit we're going to be passing in is how frequently we want this timer to do something in milliseconds. So if we want this timer to do something every one second, we're going to pass in 1000 for 1000 milliseconds, which equals one second. So the next argument, separate it with a comma, we're going to pass in a new action listener. Then you need a set of parentheses. And this part's going to get a little complicated. So we're going to add a set of curly braces within here, and we're going to add an action performed method. So type in public void action performed parentheses, and then pass in action event E. Well, I guess we're not passing something in, this is a parameter. And then a set of curly braces then everything within this set of curly braces is what this timer is going to do every 1000 milliseconds. Uh, let me just add a semicolon at the end. Things can get kind of funky with all these curly braces and parentheses. And if you use an eclipse, everything might become uh, color coordinated if everything checks out. So we're just going to be passing in 1000 milliseconds and a new action listener. And then within here, we're going to define a action performed method. And this is what our timer is going to do every 1000 milliseconds. Now the first line is that we're going to increase the elapsed time by 1000 milliseconds. So you can type in elapsed time plus equals 1000 or the longhand way, which is more clear is elapsed time equals elapsed time plus 1000, which works the same then. We'll also need to figure out how many hours have passed. So one way to do that is that we can take our hours variable, set this equal to, within parentheses, elapsed time divided by 3,600,000. This number is the amount of milliseconds that are in one hour. So dividing the total elapsed time that has passed by 3,600,000 milliseconds will give us the amount of hours that have passed then. Let's do something similar for minutes and seconds. So minutes equals, within parentheses, elapsed time, but this time divided by 60,000 because there's 60,000 milliseconds in one minute. And then we're also going to set this to modulus 60. So what we're doing here is that we don't want it to display like 60 minutes or 61 minutes or anything above that. So let's say that it's at 59 minutes, so 59 modulus 60 would be 59. When this increases to 60 minutes, 60 modulus 60 would be zero because modulus uh, gives you the remainder, and then 61 modulus 60 would be just one, and then our hours would increase at that time. Now let's add seconds. So seconds equals elapsed time divided by 1000 because there's 1000 milliseconds in one second, and then modulus 60 because we don't want to display anything 60 or above. Okay, so then we'll want to set our different strings. So we can just copy this. So we're going to update these different strings. So our second string equals whatever our seconds currently is at. And then we're going to be adding this later. Uh, so then let's do the same thing for minutes and then hours. So all of these strings are gonna update. And the last thing to do within this timer is that we're going to update our time label with these new strings for the hours, minutes, and seconds. So time label dot set text, then within parentheses, we're going to add our hours first. So hours string, and then we'll just add a colon character between these plus our minute string, plus another colon, plus our seconds string. Now what we'll want to do is to start our timer when we hit our start button. So let's close out of this and head down there to, we're gonna start with action performed. So what we'll check here is if E dot get source 
parentheses, is equal to our start button, then what we'll do, so within curly braces is, we're gonna call the start function. And then within the start function, all we need to type here is the name of our timer, so timer.start. Okay, let's test this out so far. Whoops, not restart, just start. Okay, let's try it. Crossing my fingers here. Okay, so it's not started currently, but when we hit start, it is in fact starting, so that's pretty sweet to see. Now let's also test the minutes and the seconds, and I don't feel like waiting here for like a minute or even less so an hour. So what we're gonna do with our elapsed time is just give this a little boost. So let's set this to 60 seconds to begin with, and let's see if it begins at one minute. Yep, you can see that it's fine at one minute. Uh, let's try 3,600,000 milliseconds. Yeah, and it starts at one hour, and you can see that minutes uh, reset back to zero when it hits 60. Okay, so we know that that's working then, our timer. So let's reset elapsed time back to zero and work on a few things within our action performed method then. So for this part, we're going to need our started Boolean variable, and it's currently false. So one thing that I'm thinking is that if we hit our start button, we also want it to function as a stop button. And we don't have any way of stopping this timer unless we reset it. So we can toggle if this is a start button or a stop button. But first we'll want to check to see if our started Boolean variable is currently false or if it's true. So currently it is false. So the first thing we'll check, so within if the action performed is equal to our start button, we'll start our timer, but then we'll also check if started is equal to false is it currently started and then what we'll do is take our started boolean variable and set this to true and then we'll also change the text on our button so we'll just type in start button dot set text and then we'll change this to stop so we can toggle that button between being a start button and a stop button and i'm going to take this method call and just put it within our if statement so we're only going to start our timer if started is currently equal to false now let's create an else statement so if started is not false it must be true then so our timer must be currently running so honestly we can just take all of these and then we can flip a few things. So we're going to take started and flip it to false. We're going to change our start button to display start. And then we're going to call the stop method then. And then we'll just have to go to our stop method and then set that. So timer.stop. And let's try it now. Okay, so the timer is started. And then let's stop it. Yep, and it stopped. And let's start it again. Pretty sweet, right? Okay, let's work on this reset button, and that should be it. And for the reset button, we're going to write that within our action performed method. So we got to figure out where this if statement ends. Okay, right here. Yeah, make sure you don't write this within this if statement. So it looks like it ends right here. So if e.get source parentheses is equal to our reset button, then what we want to do within this set of curly braces is we're going to take started and set this to false because we're resetting the button. Then we're also going to, let's see, we're going to take our start button and we should also set that to start. So we're going to type start here. And the last thing is that we're going to call our reset method. And this is the last thing that we need to fill out. So let's go to our reset method. We're going to take our timer and then we're going to use its stop function here. Then we also want to reset all the values. So we're going to take our elapsed time variable, set this equal to zero, 
And then we're going to take our seconds and set it to zero as well. Our minutes to zero and our hours to zero. And now we just have to update the time label. So I kind of feel like just copying and pasting it because I really don't feel like typing this out. Okay, so we're going to take all of this and copy it. So second string equals string format, yada, yada, yada. Same thing with minute string, hour string, and then time label that set text to whatever all of these are. So take all of that, copy it, and then we're going to paste it within our reset method here. Um, so feel free to pause the video if you want to type this down, but it should look like this then. So when we hit the reset button, we're taking all of these values, setting everything back to zero, and then we're updating the second string, minute string, and hour string, and then we're going to change our time label and display all of these strings then. All right, let's run this bad boy. Here is our timer. It is currently stopped. Let's start it. It's currently going up. Let's stop it. Now let's reset it. Sweet, everything's back to zero. Let's start it again. And it's counting back up from zero, so that's pretty sweet. One last thing before you go, now take a look at this. So since we created an instance of this stopwatch class, what would happen if we created another? So I'm going to call this next one stopwatch2. So we have two instances of the stopwatch class, just stopwatch and stopwatch2. Let's try it now, let's see what happens. So now we actually have two stopwatches and they each have their own individual timers, which is pretty sweet. So hopefully this will give you some ideas on things where you can have like two timers concurrently going. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's one way to make a stopwatch in Java. If you would like a copy of all this code, I'll include it in the comments down below and pin it to the top. But yeah, that's one way of creating a stopwatch in Java. Hey you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learn something new, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.